Libya has big plans for its post-war future with hopes of it being reborn as the next Dubai. On paper, it's got all the qualifications, beach, sun, and rich oil reserves, and Western companies are lining up for their stake, but it's the ones in the UK that analysts say seem likely to come out on top. For more on this, we're joined live from London by RT's Laura Smith. Good to have you with us. So why does it appear that the British companies are being favored here? Well, what we're seeing is, is essentially, uh, of course, we remember that this was uh, the, the effort to topple Gaddafi was an effort that was certainly initially led by the UK and also France. And the UK uh, sent in its air force and it also uh, used its navy to make a naval blockade around Libya. And now the National Transitional Council in Libya is saying that its friends uh, will be rewarded. And these are not just words. We've seen a couple of trips uh, in the last sort of two weeks or so. Earlier this month, the UK Department for Trade and Industry led a working party to Libya to have a look around, see what, uh, what needed doing, what needed rebuilding. And now the National Transitional Council has come to London uh, to hold a meeting with uh, top city business executives to drum up interest in what they're calling massive opportunities in, uh, to rebuild Libya. So what we're seeing really is this direct correlation between participation in the effort to oust Gaddafi and contracts that are awarded afterwards. Uh, we have seen earlier German companies express an interest in, uh, in taking part in the effort to rebuild Libya and the Libyans saying no, you know, you didn't participate in, in, uh, in, the, in the bombardment in the, in the no-fly zone, you had no part in that so you'll have no part in the business opportunities either. And of course this is the same thing that we saw post-Iraq conflict. Uh, again, French companies said to the Iraqis after the conflict was over that they wanted the opportunity to participate in contracts and the Iraqis said no you didn't participate in the war so uh, you won't get to participate in the business afterwards the majority of those contracts were awarded to UK and US companies and we have already seen that the UK Department for Trade and Industry has staff on the ground in Libya ready to welcome British companies that are awarded those contracts. Now, does it appear that the cynics will say that this was the primary goal of the humanitarian mission which those now favored countries unleashed a few months ago? Well, yeah, I mean, people have been saying that all along, really, since the very beginning. We know that Libya has uh, the biggest oil reserves in Africa. But this seems to give more fuel to that argument, seems to make it more obvious that those, those constant professions of this, uh, of a humanitarian goal, seem to have been made a mockery of by this. And as someone said to me last week, we bomb, uh, you know, we destroy, and now we get the contract to rebuild the place. And there, there is this seemingly direct correlation, as I say. And uh, we, we also heard at the time reports reports of evidence of bartering before NATO even got involved in this. We heard reports that the National Transitional Council told the French that if they sent in their warplanes, then the Libyans eventually would award Total, the French oil company, 35% of all uh, oil contracts up, uh, up for grabs. And for the UK, of course, which, which is looking like it could be one of the main players in this, this has turned out to be excellent business. Um, estimates vary as to how much the, the, the war cost uh, the UK, but uh, we're, we're sort of settled around half a billion dollars now. And uh, now we're looking at $30 billion in contracts uh, up for grabs over the next 10 years. So it certainly looks like an excellent investment. All right, RT's Laura Smith live for us in London. Thanks for that report.